So I'm going to try to burn my face onto this provided piece of wood. And when you do drag an image, it knows that it is an image. The maximum power is at 20%. I changed it to 50 because I don't think that 20 is going to be enough. But yeah, it kind of sets up the settings here for the image. And we can kind of see it like makes these little dots. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is and see what happens. I framed it. So let's push start. And there it goes. It looks like it is burning. It is quite black on the bottom and should get lighter as we go up. Yeah, it looks pretty cool and we can see that's where it does get a little lighter. I'm going to go ahead and close this lid as the smoke is getting pretty heavy. And by the way, you can use little magnets like this to have the lid open as their sensors here. Alright, so far so good. Coming along really nicely as you guys can see. Maybe I could have made it a little more darker or powerfuler. I was worried that it might be too powerful, but this looks like just about right, I guess. All right, so it looks like we're coming to an end here. Finishing up the very top there. And there it goes. So yeah, I would say that's pretty successful there. We can kind of see the wood right through my face because it has a pattern in it. It's going to show up. Yeah, overall it looks really good even from a distance. Very accurate and <laughs> looks good. So if you want to engrave images or even anything else, you know, obviously this laser can do it. Yeah, we kind of exhausted this thing, but maybe we should cut something out of this thing and make something else. All right, so I decided to cut a project. So it's going to cut out a bunch of pieces and we have to put it together like into this B. And the scale was actually perfect for that board there. So I just flipped it around and I put some cardboard also underneath. We are going to be cutting. I'm hoping that, you know, we're not going to cut down to the bottom. So if we are, it's going to have to go two layers of cardboard. And I also set the power to 90 instead of 100 and speed a little faster, 800 instead of 700 last time. So hoping that will work. So I went ahead and framed it. Let's click start. And there it goes. I guess I need to start my GoPro here. This is going to create a lot of smoke because it's cutting. So I probably need to cover this door so it can exhaust out there to the outdoors. But it uh, looks like it's cutting it maybe. Looking at it I can see that piece fell right there so it is cutting. Super cool. Lots of smoke. It is getting all sucked up though really nicely. But yeah, we're gonna let it cut it out here and we'll see what kind of project that is. Maybe we'll build it right quick as it does seem pretty unique. And if you guys are wondering, it doesn't take long at all. We're already almost halfway. So it's been about three minutes, so. All right, and it's done. So yeah, I'm probably gonna have to be kind of careful taking this off. I need to see where all the pieces are. They're all actually numbered too, so that makes it kind of nice. Let's see. All right, so we went through, but it only kind of engraved the box here. So yeah, 90% looks like it was pretty much perfect without burning the bottom floor, which I kind of did in the beginning a little bit. All right, so I got the B together and man, did it turn out pretty cool. So yeah, this was pretty fun. I did have to glue it as my board is a little thinner, I think, than the spec of this build. And yeah, very impressive. You can see you can make little projects like this, I like this B here or even this dice, which definitely was not the right thickness. This is why it looks like this. Or you can kind of stack them, I guess. Let's say three of the same thing, probably fill up these gaps. But in any case, this is just examples of what you can make. And here we have the cutout for the dice. And this one here is the B, which we kind of reused with multiple things. Also my face here, you can kind of see my eyes, but yeah. So you guys see it's quite versatile with pretty much anything that has to do with lasering or cutting. It's really good at 22 watts. It's quite powerful. Now, if you're going to cut really thick stuff, obviously you're just going to have to go slower, but I would say the 22 watt can probably do quarter inch, three eighths, no problem. As long as you know, you slow it down. And because of the air assist, you can really go slow and cut pretty deep. But as far as engraving, you guys can see I engraved into here. So this is aluminum. This was a first shot kind of try and it turned out pretty good. Probably not the best font to use. 
But yeah. And also this is 3D printed. So it's like a holder for air tanks. And you can definitely engrave into 3D prints also if you wanted to so so i've engraved a bunch of other little things which is super fun especially with the camera on the top you can really align it just right exactly where you want it and so that makes it so much easier to line everything up and get it all dialed in now for some reason the 22 watt diode is not strong enough for you over time you can upgrade the machine to a 40 watt diode just by getting the new head and you can you know double the power on this thing which is definitely a plus as you can upgrade we do have a very generous 400 by 410 millimeter work area now if you needed something larger what you could do is just slide this tray out completely and then the whole bottom will be open and you know you can lower the a laser down so let's say I wanted to engrave straight into this table I would just take this out lower the laser down and I can engrave straight into here so that's how you do a super huge piece but yeah anything that fits inside obviously is gonna go into this enclosure which is really nice with this really cool nifty door here now, you do have to remember that you have sensors, which sense the doors is also for the bottom one. There are a couple magnets here, so if you wanted to take this out, you would have to trigger that. And the interface here, I did not really use at all, so it could be helpful just to like frame and maybe home. But most likely this is more for if you're just going to use the SD card as you bring the file in. But yeah, with this kind of machine, I would definitely recommend connecting it to the computer and having the USB camera and everything working together. So you don't really use this panel here at all. The keys are really nice. It's quite redundant here and you do get two, which you can turn it on and off. You also have this emergency and you also have a power on and off button on the side. So yeah, three ways to turn this thing off and on, or should I say all all three of them have to be on in order for it to power on. The air pump is really nice. It's quiet. It does its job. There's a regulator here where you can go faster or slower with the air and it's very useful when you're cutting especially. The exhaust fan is pretty loud but it does need to be strong as there's a lot of smoke in here again when it's cutting and you need to exhaust it and it's nice that it comes with a pipe. And of course we have the light on and off or I guess it's more like on or out. -a. Same thing for the fan. So when it's on auto it controls it automatically as it needs it but I leave the light constantly on and the fan on auto so yeah the falcon 2 pro is definitely a prosumer machine it brings this nice cover for safety beautiful great build quality everything is metal and with that said it's not the most affordable machine but for everything you get and how it all works together being enclosed having all the safety features the ease of aligning things up with usb camera the air assist the ability to upgrade the laser and just the overall build quality makes this a very decent and compelling overall package